Now this may sound like a rant, and it is. I'm a little under the weather, so doing a full educational piece this week just didn't seem right. However, I also have a more informal show besides writing today. So here is a new episode of Writing Thoughts. I share some of my bold and not so bold opinions on writing, the state of writing today, the types of stories that I like and dislike. But for this episode, I want to talk about the state of stories today. Last weekend, I was talking about this with someone else, and uh, yeah, there aren't any real heroes anymore. Now, as I describe it, you might think I'm talking about the cliches, the classic tropes of what a hero is, like the perfect action hero with the one-liners, or the noble knight fighting for justice, who never falters on their journey. Not at all, I'm talking about the classic hero who starts off with potential that is held back by plenty of flaws, or trauma, or something negative that keeps them from victory, from defeating the big bad guy. Morally grey characters have been trending for a while now, and it's now been taken so far that I feel some writers believe that this is the only way to go. And not everybody can write these sort of characters, sometimes they overdo it on the negativity and we end up with unlikable characters. These are characters that you're not rooting for, and you're hardly sympathizing when they stumble. Instead, you're kind of hoping the bad guy wins, and despise the protagonist for their behavior. I've seen it in literature, movie, TV shows, but literature hurts the most. A movie can waste an hour or two, a TV show about the same, but a book can keep you hopeful for change for far longer. So, why are these kinds of stories and characters so popular nowadays? I know you might be thinking it's the shock factor of these kinds of stories, but I don't think it's just that. There's also a push to normalize giving in to temptation of doing bad things, self-destructive things, and in some cases they even encourage it. Sad stories or shocking stories have been around for a long time, but a lot of them tend to discourage these kinds of characters have them learn from their mistakes and become an enjoyable, likeable protagonist pretty much halfway through or near the end. Not so much today, and that's why it's popular. If I may step away from talking about stories and writing for a moment, I will say it's a mental thing. We as writers know that we can gain sympathy from the reader for a character by making them likeable in a bad situation. The reader actively wants to side with the protagonist, so it helps if they can empathize with a difficult situation, or agree with certain values. Bonus points for both. In other words, there is an inherent desire in every reader to see a reflection of their strengths in the characters, a reflection of their good values. We try to differentiate, sometimes push those boundaries to the point where we create a anti-hero, but there is a darker version which has now surfaced. Some stories have protagonists who are a reflection of our weaknesses. The story highlights these issues, this abundance of flaws and bad traits, ones that can be understood if not agreed with. Suddenly you have characters who actively pursue their negative impulses, their goals are inherently selfish and sometimes self-destructive. And yes, that's attractive to readers for a different reason. They can empathize with these characters because not everybody tries to be a goody two-shoes. They've had their bad streaks, or they've been so low they started indulging in bad behavior for some cheap instant gratification. And maybe that's just the Amazon book market these days. Maybe that's just TV for the past decade. But back to my original point here, which is, there is an effort to normalize and even encourage it. These characters who do bad things often win or are idolized, because words like normal and realistic and grounded are thrown around so often that some people think that is how life works, and they can feel better about enjoying their own vices or giving in to their own bad habits. We all know the world has issues, they are all around us, but we also know that indulging in the misery of it all, getting carried away by the stream of indecency, isn't the way to go. The acceptance of evil doesn't mean giving in to it, it means understanding how to better resist it. To stand by one's values, even if one does not benefit. To keep one's promises, even when they don't feel like it. 
to do the right thing and lose. We need more characters with this kind of behavior, not the ones who show us what is wrong, but the ones who show us what is right. Because as I said, if all we ever see is the wrong things, we'll have to idolize the least of those wrong things, and that still isn't right. Of course, if you try to act that way in this world, pursue it passionately, you'll have many of these grounded and normal people doing their best to encourage bad behavior. Either because they want to see you win, even if you have to do it by doing bad things, or they want to feel better about doing the bad things they do, and it helps if they hang around the kind of people that do the same things. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that was pretty much the major point I took away from Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. Don Quixote was an overcorrection, a character who was mad, becoming a knight who refused to play by the world's bitter reality, but seek justice through honorable deeds. The story appealed to me for many reasons, and I talked about that in my book review. But one of them is that I have more appreciation for a character trying their best in a grounded world, even if they come off as crazy, than I do for characters that give in to decline of values the world encourages. Don Quixote was a lot more likable as a character. Better a good loyal fool than a selfish inconsistent king. The stories that always capture my interest are the ones with characters like that, who are flawed enough to be seen as human. First of all, I don't appreciate the perfect characters because I feel they lack personality. It's okay to have a character who has flaws, but if that's all that they have, I don't see them as likable. So yes, enough flaws to make them human, but live for others or something greater rather than themselves. The kind of characters who stand by what truly matters, even if they pay for it in the end. Those stories are far better, in my opinion, than stories of characters who only serve themselves, seek their own happiness over everyone else's. And yes, that is just my opinion on the subject. I'm sure there are others who would disagree, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Show me the error in my logic, or watch me crush yours with my sheer pig-headed stubbornness. Anyway, those are just my thoughts on why I feel that there aren't any real heroes nowadays, and this world has kind of gotten carried away with characters who are losing themselves and, in a way, encouraging others to do the same in order to benefit in this society. Of course, that is probably far too grand of a topic for me to talk about knowledgeably on, but as far as writing goes, I feel that I'd like to have a bit more heroes in this world that overcome their flaws or at the very least learn to better control them, so that that way they can overcome the challenges that the story presents. Because quite simply, that is something that we as humans often strive to do. We want to have characters that encourage us to be stronger, and not for us to just indulge and embrace our weaknesses. But again, I'm probably talking about something that's far beyond me. At least, I thank you for listening. This was Writing Thoughts, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, good day, good night, and happy writing.